All right, so in this podcast, we're going to talk about trends on the periodic table. All right, so to understand um, trends on the periodic table, you first need to understand this thing called effective nuclear charge. Effective nuclear charge is basically the charge of the nucleus minus any of the shielding effect that it's occurring because of the core electrons. So the nucleus is positive because of the protons. Um, electrons are negative. So there's an attraction there, okay? Now, the very outer shell of electrons, the valence electrons, they experience less of a pull from the nucleus because of all these other electrons that are closer to the nucleus, the core electrons that are kind of blocking some of that positive attraction. So we call that the shielding effect. But in essence, what you need to know is that uh, the charge of the nucleus or the effective nuclear charge has a lot to do with trends. All right. So the size of atoms um, or the radius, <clears throat> basically, which is the distance from the nucleus to the outside shell of electrons, um, is what we call atomic radius, okay? So that is all related to the size. So atomic radius decreases going from left to right on the periodic table and increases going down, so from the top to the bottom. All right, so let's talk about the top to the bottom first, periodic table. What you have going on is every time you move to the right on that same row, you get another proton in the nucleus, right? So that extra proton in the nucleus is pulling that shell of electrons closer. So every time you get another proton, it pulls that shell in tighter. So that's why the, the, the atom itself gets smaller as you go across a row because that proton, that extra proton, just pulls that shell in tighter and tighter. Um, the top to the bottom is very easy to understand because the more you go down um, the periodic table, the more shells or rings of electrons you get. So obviously it's going to get bigger, right? Now going from uh, left to right across the all right, ionization energy is um, another periodic trend we're going to talk about. Basically, what it is, is it's the amount of energy required to move the outermost electron um, from the atom. Now, you can have first ionization energy, second ionization energy, third ionization energy, and so on. Basically, what that means is the first ionization energy is the energy required to remove the first electron. Second ionization energy is the energy required to move the second electron. And then it continues on and on and so forth. Now, trends in this. So, as you move from left to right across the periodic table, the ionization energy increases. So, it's harder to remove the electron. That all goes back to that proton. So as you move from left to right, you get more protons in the nucleus. And because you get more protons, that means it's harder to remove an electron from that ring because that nucleus is pulling harder on that electron. There's more of an attraction between them. So as you go from left to right, you have um, an increase in ionization energy because you are getting more protons. You have a higher nuclear charge or effective nuclear charge. All right, as you go from top to bottom on the periodic table, you have a decrease in um, ionization energy. Now, that's going to make sense, hopefully, because as you move down the periodic table, you get more rings, right? More rings means that those electrons are further away from the nucleus. And you know from the Coulomb's Law um, podcast that the further away the, those valence electrons are from the nucleus, the less force of attraction they're experiencing. So if they're experiencing less force of attraction, you can remove them easier. All right, so we already talked about the fact that as you um, go across a row or across the periodic table from left to right, it gets harder to remove an electron because you get more protons, right? Higher effective nuclear charge. However, negativity is basically... Um, 
it's a measure of the atom's attraction for a shared pair of electrons in the bond. So it's basically when you're in the bond, in a, in a bonded pair, in a shared pair, which um, the atom that's going to pull that pair closer to itself, okay? All right, so um, going across, electronegativity increases. It increases for the same reason as ionization energy and atomic radius going across. So it increases because you're getting more of the... Um, getting more protons in the nucleus, which means there's a higher attraction, okay? So, like, for example, F, fluorine, is going to pull any shared pair that it has in a bond closer to itself because it has more protons. Now, please note that the um, noble gases over here have no electronegativity because they are not known to bond, okay? There are a few exceptions to that, but they have no electronegativity officially. So fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. All right, now going down um, the periodic table, you have decreasing electronegativity. All right, this is for the same reason as atomic radius and ionization energy. As you move down, you get more shells of electrons. The more electrons you get, the less um, attraction there is between that nucleus and that outer shell because they're so far apart. So the um, most, uh, well, let's see, the least electronegative element on the table would be here because it is um, at the very bottom. So it has a whole bunch of rings of electrons and therefore it does not pull any shared pairs very close to itself as compared to like fluorine or even somebody over here. Okay?